And now, for the exciting continuation of Chapter 3, Lesson 6, Solving Compound Inequalities, Day 2. All right, so here we're going to take and just make one level, um, probably add a level on to our we're solving compound inequalities. Instead of just taking um, some simple problems to solve and to graph, we are now going to have them become a little bit more challenging. So as you can see, we've got the word or here, okay? And so if we think about what that or means, we know that as long as one of the two things is true, the whole thing is true. But unlike what we had before, we now actually have a little bit more that we have to solve. So you'll have to write in and tell me the colors you would like me to use from now on. Woo, that was a highlighter. I don't think I want a highlighter right now. Just trying to, oh, that's because I picked the wrong thing. So sorry, people. All right, so here we go. We're going to actually first have to solve this inequality and then we can take it and graph it. So the first thing I see when I look simply at this side of the inequality, I'm gonna add five to both sides, and I get three P is less than negative eight plus five is negative three. Still not done, divide both sides by three, and I get that P is less than, whoops, not p is less than 3, we're going to choose an eraser here, but p is less than 1. Okay, so I know one part of mine is p is less than 1, and I just about messed that up. It's actually less than negative 1. I'm sure you were yelling at the computer screen, telling me not to make such an awful mistake. So now if I plug it in, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, negative 3 take away 5 is negative 8. So I found the proper endpoint. Then if I pick a number that's less than negative 1, for example, negative 2, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and negative 6 take away 5 is negative 11, and negative 11 is most definitely less than negative 8, so it works. All right, so now I look at this next side, or this right side of the problem, and I'm going to take 8 away from both sides. All right, not quite sure what I touched there. I think I, I, something with the mouse, I'm guessing. So I take 8 away from both sides, and I now have negative 2p is less than or equal to negative 6. Oh, Check out, we got to keep all those little rules in our brains. We're going to divide by a negative 2. And my friends, when I divide by a negative 2, what happens to my sign? Oh, yes, you are so smart. You got it. We switch it. It's no longer a less than or equal to. It is now a greater than or equal to 3. So now I've got these two pieces here, this and this, and I have to graph them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, remember, this is compound. It's got the or in there. So I just need, if this is 0, and then that's going to make this way over here a 3, and this right next door is going to be a negative 1. Now I am simply going to graph it. So less than negative 1 means the open circle and moving to the left. Um, I forgot to check this one, so let's go ahead and check it. If I plug a 3 in, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, and negative 6 plus 8 is 2. So we found our endpoint. Now I can pick a number bigger than 3, and it should still work. So I'm going to pick 5. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 is less than 2. We got it to work. So now I have to have a filled in or a closed circle, and I have to move to the greater than. So we have solved and graphed our equation. Excuse me, our inequality. All right, this next one, I don't see the same, I don't see the word or. So we know this one is an and problem, okay? So we've got an and situation here, and what that means is I'm going to have to look at it kind of in two pieces. I'm going to have to evaluate 
this piece right here. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to have to evaluate this piece right here. So you see how it's chunked into two. All right, so if I take it and look at it in the first part, so I'm going to do the green highlight part now. I'm going to take seven away from both sides, and I get zero is less than or equal to 2x. Well, if I divide both sides by 2, I get that 0 is less than or equal to x. And as we've had this conversation before, my brain doesn't work this way. We're going to change it to x is greater than or equal to 0. So as long as I choose a number, if I, if I choose 0, 0 times 2 is 0 plus 7 is 7. 7 equals 7. So we've solved the highlight part correctly. We found our endpoint. Now I want to see which direction my arrow is going to go. So as long as I pick something bigger than zero, it's going to work. I choose one. Two times one is two plus seven is nine and seven is less than nine. So we got it to work. All right, now we're ready to solve what I boxed in red. So now again, we're just going to treat it. We've got two X plus seven is less than or equal to 19. So we're going to take 7 away from both sides, and we get 2x is less than or equal to 12. Divide both sides by 2, and I get x is less than or equal to 6. So what we just figured out, let's make sure that that end point works. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 7 is 19. Okay, we got that to work. We've got our end point. We know it's got to be 6. Now it says pick a number less than 6 to make this work, so I'm going to just go with 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 7 is 9, and 9 is definitely less than 19. Now, because this was an and situation, we need to make sure that these have to um, have a crossover or an intersection, an overlap or an intersection. So I'm going to put my 6 here. I'm going to put my 0 here. And the x is greater than or equal to 0 gets the filled in or the closed circle. x is less than or equal to 6 also gets a closed circle. And less than or equal to 6 goes this way. Greater than or equal to 0 goes this way. So this is the intersection of those two values. Now we're going to throw one more um, sort of loop in here. We're going to look at um, what some symbols mean and how we can interpret uh, our numbers in symbols to get an idea of how to graph it. All right, first of all, the things that you need to make note of here, and I'm just going to highlight them so we can kind of see them here. We've got a parenthesis. We've got a bracket. Over here, we've got parentheses and brackets as well, or parenthesis, parenthesis. And we're going to have a conversation about what those things mean. I also want you to see that in the one that is on the uh, number four over here, you should see the word or. Whoops. All right, let's go ahead and pick a pen and... Oh, yes, I hear you all. You would like this baby blue. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for that good choice out there, fans of mine. Um, and so what we're going to do here is, oh, and the other thing you need to note is this um, looks kind of like an eight laying on its side is uh, one of Buzz Lightyear's favorite numbers. It's to infinity and beyond. And so we've got infinity, which means it goes forever and ever in that particular direction. There is no end. All right, so let's start by looking at number three on the left side here. Whenever I see this parenthesis, the parenthesis tells me it's either going to be a less than or a greater than. Because the parenthesis appears on the left side, I know it's going to be less than. So two is less than x, which is, oh, now the bracket, the bracket means less than or or equal to 9. Now, had these been um, on the other sides, had the bracket been on the left and the parenthesis been on the right, um, the bracket on 
the left would have been less than or equal to, and the parenthesis on the right would have just been less than. Because we don't see the word or, and we are already given these two numbers, we know that what they're asking us to deal with is a situation where we've got an and. So if this is a situation where we have an and, we're saying the crossover of these two pieces. Now, if you have some of the same issues I have, you can visualize this less than or equal to nine pretty easily. We know we fill in our circle and we know it's gonna go in that direction. Um, but if you're like me, you might be looking at this and you might be going, wait a minute, this kind of messes me up. So we just switch it and it's x has to be greater than two. So I come down here to my where two would fall because it's just greater than, I do my open circle and now I connect them because less than nine indicated it went in this direction, greater than two indicated it went in that direction. So it's the, the, the spot where those two intersect or cross over. All right, number four, we shouldn't have any major issues here. We see the word or, so we know we've got that or situation. All right, I see a parenthesis on the left side, which at this point, um, because it goes to infinity, we're not really worried. That's just saying, hey, this bad boy is going to keep going and going and going to the left. It's going to get more and more negative. But this right side is x. Um, it has to be less than or equal to 3, okay? Because when this is sitting here, this tells me my high um, endpoint is negative 3. So if I were writing it, I would say x is less than or equal to negative 3. This just indicates it's going to keep going in that direction to the left. This tells me what its endpoint is. So if I'm graphing this, here's my three. I fill in my circle. Whoop. All right, let's try that again. It didn't like coloring in. And we're going to draw it to the left. Now this one says, okay, zero is going to be our in end point. But when I look at it, I see that it's got that parenthesis, which means, oh yeah. All right, we're dealing with greater than zero. So x is going to be greater than zero. Not equal to, it's not a bracket. So we're going to use greater than zero. And this infinity symbol here says, guess what? That bugger is just going to keep on going and going and going. So we mark off our zero. We put our open circle and we draw our arrow to the right. x is greater than zero. So in this situation, the only possible numbers that would not be acceptable solutions to this are the numbers that fall between 0 and negative 3. I just noticed I forgot to write the negative there. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to mess you up. All right? So the only things that don't fit this one would be anything that sits between here up to 3. Okay? All right. Now, it's the moment you've been waiting for. I know you love this part. It's your turn. Yes. For all of us who love our math, we are so excited to show what we know. Graph the solution set, which is um, what we have just done right here. Um, that's this side. That's what we did earlier. Problems one and two. Graph the solution set or... Write the interval. That's what you're going to do for number six, what we just did on problems three and four. All right, good luck. Have some fun and solve those math problems. Bye.